So I'm really kind of amazed that Stefan Stearns actually showed up in court today. Thank God for this AroundOsceola.com news article by Ken Jackson. So today is Monday, October 14th. We didn't think Stearns would be in court. You know, this is his first ever court appearance. That's what it's called. Stearns makes first ever court appearance on Monday. New court dates set in trial of man accused of sexually assaulting, killing Kissimmee teen Madeline Soto. So you see Stearns, it's a far away photo, but you can still see his beard and his hair. It's hard to see because it's blurrier the more you try and zoom in on it, but at least he was there. I don't know if his lawyer told him to show up or what. Let's read it together. For the first time, Stephen Stearns, the man prosecutors have charged with sexually assaulting and murdering 13-year-old Kissimmee teen Madeline Soto made an in-person court appearance on Monday. I was waiting. I was looking in the judge's website and the Osceola website and emailing people and everything, just trying to figure out if it was going to be streamed. I'm not sure if anyone got any video of his appearance. It says Stearns, with a neatly trimmed beard and, and haircut, did not speak during his brief appearance at Monday's status hearing for his trials. He entered the courtroom shortly before the 10 minute hearing and was let out immediately after it concluded. So I didn't see it. I guess I should have kept watching I was watching the initial appearances feed. There's an Osceola and an Orange County one. I was watching the Osceola one. I got distracted, but I'm not sure if he would have appeared there anyway. Some places make it so difficult just to watch a court hearing. It shouldn't be this difficult. So I'm sure he was let out pretty quickly. He didn't want to stand around or stick around, but it said aside from the murder, the state has charged him with 60 counts of sexual battery, lewd and lascivious molestation, and possession of CSAM. Those are the charges filed by the state attorney's office after they searched his phone and a Google Drive after Madeline was reported missing back on Monday, February 26th. All these things we know. The state attorney filed to seek the death penalty against Stearns, who remains in the Osceola County Jail. It talks about the wheels of justice moving slowly. Assistant State Attorney Danielle Pinnell noted no depositions have been done. Whoa, no depositions have been done? Oh my goodness, that's surprising. Or have been scheduled among the many witnesses in what are now separate cases. Okay, she said the murder case has many more witnesses. Now that doesn't mean no interviews have been done, but no depositions, that's kind of weird to me. Now I know Florida has been through a hurricane and everything, but that's really weird. So I'm looking up deposition, the process of giving sworn evidence, a formal, usually written statement to be used as evidence. That's strange. No depositions from any witnesses have been done? Oh, wow, that just took me aback. I'm reading this with you. Today is October 14th. So Maddie was reported missing, unfortunately found March 1st. She was reported missing February 26th and found deceased March 1st. March, April, May, June, July, August, September. We're into October now. Seven and a half months later, no depositions have been done. I wonder which specific depositions they're talking about because I know they've done interviews and none have been scheduled among the many witnesses in what are now separate cases. She said the murder case has many more witnesses. Public defender Beth Borden, I keep saying her name wrong, Borden, Borden, surrounded by a defense team of three other attorneys. Wow, so she has a lot of help there. So we looked at previously my brief contact with Beth through Twitter when I was asking her who paid that $50 filing fee for Stephen Stearns. Beth told Judge Keith Karsten, I think his name is Karsten, not Karsteens, because I've looked it up enough on this website here. I think his name is just Judge Keith Karsten. Looking it up again. I like to verify everything when I can, but this has really thrown me for a loop about those depositions there. Karsten, Judge Keith Karsten. Stefan Stern's attorney, public defender Beth Borden, surrounded by a defense team of three other attorneys, told Judge Keith Karsten that she is currently on another death penalty case 
and has two others on her docket. She's busy and we know she's been a cancer survivor. She's been through a lot. We talked about in the last video. Whoa, she asked that the case be scheduled for 2027. Oh my God, I'm just reading this with you guys. So I'm blown away here. But thankfully, Judge Karsten said that would, quote, test the bounds of what is reasonable. Ooh, thank God for that answer. I mean, I know, believe me, these lawyers are busy. I mean, she's working another death penalty case and she has two others on her docket, two other death penalty cases. That's a lot of work. No wonder no depositions, I guess, have been done yet. Wow, talk about the wheels of justice really moving slowly. But 2027, I mean, this is 2024. That's like three years from now or less. But Judge Karsten set the new pretrial hearings for Stefan Stern's cases, noting that the case with 60 counts has fewer hurdles standing in the way. He's tentatively scheduled that case for a pretrial hearing Wednesday, February 12th, 2025, and for a trial docket of February 24th through March 14th. I hope that at least stays. And then he set a pretrial hearing with discovery and deposition update deadlines of September 10th of September 10th, 2025, and a trial period to start September 22nd. Wow. So this is only on the CSAM case. He's tentatively saying, okay, let's schedule that for Wednesday, February 12th, 2025. So that's how many months from now? November, December, January, February, four months from now. That's the pre-trial. And then the actual trial, actual trial for that CSAM case, February 24th, through the March 14th. So I'm assuming the murder trial pre-hearing with discovery and deposition update deadlines would be a year from now almost, September 10th, 2025, and a trial period to start of September 22nd. But with Stern's lawyer wanting this to be scheduled in 2027, that means, whoa, I don't think we're going to see Stern's trial start anytime soon. That's my thought process. I mean, she's got a lot on her hands. She's got extra attorneys on her team, obviously, surrounded by three people. But each one of these cases we can see has so much, there's so much data, there's so much information, so much horrible data, so many gigabytes. We know about Stearns having 1,700 horrible photos of Maddie. I don't know how many videos. All of that takes up a lot of space. And there's so many witnesses, I'm sure. But I just want to look at these photos of Stearns to see if I can see anything different. Anything I'm just noticing about him since we haven't seen him before. Now this one is really hard to see. You just see others in court. You see him, but it's from so far away. But thank God this reporter was able to get in there. It's from so far away. And I think I, I can't tell if I see his lawyer sitting there. That doesn't look like her. And you see a guard standing behind him. It's from so far away, it's hard to tell. I can't really tell if he's lost or gained much weight. He kind of looks the same, just his hair just looks a little shorter to me. Well, so there you go. Those are the updates. We're still going back and forth with authorities in Florida. We did get an estimate on another batch of photos, but they told us most of them will be redacted. So there's no need for us to have all these photos. Of course, if they're the photos of horrible stuff that's already redacted, we don't want them anyway. We only requested the unredacted ones. Whatever's viable to the case, something informative, nothing gross. We don't want to see anything gross. They don't need to release anything gross. But that's it. That's what we have for now. I think we're going to be waiting quite a while. I'm just shocked. I'm shocked that Stearns' attorney wanted to wait until 2027. I mean, I know stuff gets behind. A lawyer's job is, it can be a thankless job. As Beth talked about in those articles, we went over that Fast Company interview, Stearns' lawyer talked about public defenders just not making a lot of money. I mean, she had to go for a GoFundMe in order to just fund her home as she recuperated from cancer. And can you imagine the workload of these people, no matter who they are, a criminal defense attorney or a prosecutor or whomever, this workload they have to get all this work done, go through all this evidence, try and do an adequate job so they're not ineffective counsel. Oh my goodness. And then battling an illness to boot? I can't imagine. 
So I'm sure that's why she asked for so much time. It comes a point where loved ones of the victim, Madeline Soto's loved ones, Madeline herself, you know, she deserves justice and not to wait and wait and wait. I mean, at least Stearns isn't going anywhere. At least he's still sitting behind bars. But you don't want to see, you don't want to have to wait years and years and years to finally get a guilty verdict. So I think that's all we have now. We'll just keep watching the docket and again, just move on to other cases as I've been doing, but also still getting whatever Freedom of Information Act information that is allowable and appropriate to report on. Of course, a lot of that stuff we just don't want to see. So check out my last photo on Stefan Stearns' attorney if you want to know more about her, that public defender. And let's just close with 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Clean out the old leaven so that you may be a new batch just as you are still unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Ooh, I wonder what made Stearns decide to show up to court today. A lot of people didn't expect him, and I really wish a lot of these places could just make it appropriate for us to do our jobs here and report the facts without necessarily having to go in person, into a courtroom. Different judges perform differently. Fulton County in Atlanta, in Georgia, they make a big deal like i went through this whole thing filling out a rule 22 as it were because i wanted to be able to view and record kim zolziak she's going to court soon with her husband croy you know i've published a lot of those body cam videos and you fill out a rule 22 to say okay i want to watch this on zoom if their next hearing is on zoom record it to be able to show it to you guys the viewers want to see what's happening in court they want facts and this particular judge no matter what, even if it's on Zoom, this judge was like, no, you have to be in the courtroom to record, if they even give you permission to record. It gets frustrating. So I don't know if Stearns was actually streamed anywhere today or not, but I really wish all these places were a lot more streamlined. I wish the public was able to witness, of course, not all of the evidence in Maddie's trial. Madeline Soto's trial, of course, we don't want to see all the stuff the jury, unfortunately, will have to see. But we do want to see the process. We want to be able to get in there and just see justice being done. And I don't know, I'll get off my rant right now, but that's one thing along with these FOIA requests and just trying to bring you guys the accurate reporting Sometimes this is what stands in the way where I feel like it's being made a lot more difficult to just witness a court hearing, but at least we know what happened now. So that's it. We'll wait and see. Thanks so much for watching. Grateful we got this update at all. God bless this around Osceola.com for going, for taking the time, Ken Jackson for even going in there and doing what he had to do to get in the courtroom and get these photos. Take care.